this week on the Roommates Podcast. So, in a sense, some women are going on that goal. It's like, I'm in school to be a doctor because I know for a fact that with the money, Mm -hmm. I can definitely provide my family in a greater, you know, financially. But this is the. I'm just saying that's that's is, the goal. This, that's not. I, a, I to know, them, it I might know. not be counterproductive, is what I'm but saying. But here's a spicy. Hey, here's a spicy. Spicy. The spicy take about that. <laughs> okay. The spicy take about that is that, like I say, there's nothing wrong with because we all have to be able to put food on the table for your children, right? But the most important thing, in my opinion. Providing for your family, what will really make you happy is more than you having a good job, is you actually having a good husband. If we're just being really honest. And vice versa. Yo, 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 what's good is your boy Hafiz? Chris the Star the Show, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, and no welcome way. to the Roommates, a worldwide community of individuals united on the values of becoming, holistic health, kindness, togetherness, and a thirst for knowledge. Mm, also. Also known as the best hour of your week where you are. Entertained like a stand-up. Educated like a TED Talk. And enlightened like a sermon, baby. Yo, boom, yo, boom, yo, boom. boom, boom. You know what? Every single week you've been gone, I've messed up the intro. Why? I don't know why. <laughs> Got you a professional. What's going on? I know because I was used to going Hafiz, then Chris, mm. then the intro. So every time I went in. You was like, wait for something. Yeah, I was like, uh, uh, uh. And every single week from Ben, Devon to Schultz, I messed Schultz. up. I messed it up every single week. Gosh, those are all good people though. Yes, yes, yes. Shout out to the guests. Shout out to the guests. And guys, real quick, real quick. We recently started a second YouTube channel and the YouTube channel is the Roommates Podcast Clips. Yes. And the purpose of that channel is we've realized that we want to continue to get our content out to more people, engage more people, you know, spread the message of the community and, and of all the things we're trying to do. But we realize some people may not be able to watch an hour episode or two hour episode the first time. So we want to be able to put out clips for people to be able to watch, learn about our show. And also, if you guys have friends who you want to introduce the show to, you can be able to point them to these clips as well. So yep, the link is in the description below. So if you guys are on YouTube, shout out to everybody watching it via the premiere. If you're on YouTube right now, just go ahead and hit the description button in the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. It will mean the world to us. Yes, if you're listening it via audio, go ahead and you can also subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's in the description as well. So go ahead and click on that. You know what? what? I'm going to give them about 10 seconds okay. to go ahead, scroll to the description, click it where it says subscribe to our new channel here, and mm. go ahead and subscribe. And so guys, make sure you subscribe to that channel. And in case you want to know the quick link to subscribe, it is bit.ly slash <laughs> B-I-T. Yeah, it's like C- <laughs> Huh? Look at you, man. Confusing them already. So like I said, it's in the description. So click on the description to go ahead and subscribe to our new YouTube channel. Yep. And like I said, if you want to type it in real quick, it is bit.ly slash TRP clips. One mm. more time. That's bit.ly slash TRP clips. Make sure you subscribe to our second channel. It will mean the world to us. Yep. Hey, Mr. Jordan Bilo. <laughs> uh, How the women have been ra- yeah, okay. waiting, waiting <laughs> for you your return. Here? <laughs> you you start? They've been waiting for your return. I've been waiting for my return too. Yo. Are you having tryouts and whatnot? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Tryout. <laughs> He's oh, trying man. to replace me. He's not going to replace me. <laughs> oh, I had a funny joke, but it was bad. It was bad? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm glad you didn't say that. That's what I'm saying. Stick to that joke. Stay with me. How you been, man? What's been going on? Where you been at? Man, I've been, you know, moving around, mm-hmm. going back and forth. You back, know? back and forth. And but we'll forth. save it. We'll save all that stuff, for, you know, for April 1st. Oh, April 1st. Hey, guys. Dun, real dun, quick. Dun. Go ahead. Oh, that's what you want me. You want me to do it. And grab your phone. Oh, okay. I, I, I wasn't ready for that one. Open, type in your passcode. 
and then click on the calendar button. Okay. April 1st, we have a huge announcement for you. So make sure you set a reminder on your phone. That's a April, Monday, by the way. Yes, Monday. April 1st, we have a huge announcement for and you guys. And nothing to do April Fool's. Yeah. So don't even think about that. <laughs> cut that out right now. Yeah, yeah. We're adults. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So remember, April 1st. So you say you're going to announce where you've been at. You're going to add that to our yes, sh- yes. what we're talking about April 1st. Mm-hmm. Okay, so ladies, I know a lot of you guys have been asking and crying and begging to know where Mr. below has been at. Crying April and begging. April 1st, he will tell you guys where he's been at. And we have a very, very big announcement that we're going to make. Speaking of ladies, <laughs> please. Yes. I'm tired of these women coming into my DMs talking about you. You are lying. <laughs> okay, you okay, keep okay. on playing Stop. these games. Stop you it. keep on playing Stop these it. games. Stop it. Stop it. This girl literally was like, oh my God, I love his chocolate skin. And Dude. I'm just like, why are you telling me this? The crazy thing is, wait for this. Oh my God. Wait for this. She's allergic to chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wait, what is happening right now? Bobby, don't act like you ain't you ain't the real star around here. I've I, seen it. I've seen it. I promise you, if you do an inventory <laughs> oh my God. of my direct messages compared to Chris. Oh, let's not let's not do that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> let's not, not do it. No, I'm talking about I'm gonna be losing if we do that. No. I don't wanna do that. I promise you, I get on average one direct message a month. Hafiz, I literally witnessed you. We were in Zach's beast, right? He's so, lying. He's, stop, liar, stop. liar, liar, we, pants we, for hire. We were in Zach's beast, right? <laughs> I'm chilling. I like chicken. I'm black. <laughs> so I want some chicken. This was Hafiz's idea. We go up to, we go up to Zach's beast, right? It's not true. So we're not, so we ain't go to Zach's beast? So that's not I'm true? Like, your story is not true, but go ahead and continue. <laughs> So I'm standing in the line, right? I'm ordering, mm-hmm. minding my own business. Mm-hmm. I see this girl. Okay. She comes up. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's you. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh. You know, I'm looking around, I'm like, who here? <laughs> you know what I mean? But she was talking about her face. Oh my goodness. She was like, crazy. oh my God, I love you. I need a picture with you. Oh my goodness. And I'm sitting there, like, man, I'm sitting there, you know, with the cup in my hand, like, <laughs> you know, we're not on the same show. What's going on? <laughs> she didn't. She didn't offer to buy this man his meal. Okay. Chris. What? You this is my story. Okay, this is my ahead. story. Go it's ahead. my go story. Ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Basically, what I'm saying is, he's the real star. Do not let her feast fool y'all. Women want you. Chris. Women want you. You're not deceiving anybody. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? What are you talking about? You're not tricking anybody with your falsified, falsified. Fact, unfactual story. I did do this thing one time. Okay, go ahead. I asked some people. I asked about 100 random people mm-hmm. in the United States and America. Because you don't have, like, Chris, the star of the show, right? Mm-hmm. I've been trying to find you something. Hafiz D, whatever. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Hafiz D, whatever. D, D whatever. <laughs> I come up with three. <laughs> 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 oh god, beautiful us all. Yo, man, these I picked two uh, from out of the hundreds I got versus the one I thought was the best for myself that I came up with. Okay. The first one. Mm-hmm. I thought it was really boosted, but it's fine. How feast the doctor? I feast the doctor. <laughs> What the heck? That's what I said. Uh, who are you I asking? No. I was like, nah. Survey says? Survey says. <laughs> <laughs> You're wrong. I thought this one was kind of all right, but Hafiz the mind. Uh, you get uh, it? Because, you know, Chris is the heart. Hafiz is the mind. Uh, People love your ideas. People like the way you're going. Sure, People like the sure. way you're thinking. Sure, sure, sure. You don't like Hafiz the mind? No. It's like it's like the mind like in the box. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> My personal favorite was Hafiz the head ass. I thought that <laughs> was Hafiz the head ass. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was the best one. But um, I don't know. I've been really trying to figure out what's a good line for you because St. Poppy ain't it. St. Poppy's been retired. St. Poppy is, needs to be retired. Most people don't even know who St. Poppy is, bro. That was a long time ago. That was season one, bro. That was a long time ago. Mm-hmm. But I don't know, man. I've yeah. been trying to figure out and brainstorm that because mm. I feel like you need something. Because like, my wish is like we go to a live show. They have on, and I'm like, Chris, the star of the show. And just stop. And be like, bang, bang. <laughs> <laughs> that was like my wish, but uh, I, wanna, I want something for you as well. Okay. I've been thinking. Well, as you've been thinking, I've been thinking as well. You always think. I always think. And um, first and foremost, shout out everybody who's um, now recently been a part of the community, the Ben Shapiro episode. A lot of people resonated with that. Shout out, shout out. 
a lot of people really, really enjoyed how on our show mm -hmm. that we're striving to have a thirst for knowledge, you know, open mind, discerning heart. And people really respect that we're willing to talk to all different kinds of people, mm -hmm. be respectful, be open yep. and, you know, really kind of create a new culture where there's civility, where there's respect and where people can actually listen yep. to other people without talking over them you know, calling them names, disrespecting them, all those things. So yep. I thought that was pretty dope. Shout out to all the people from the Ben Shapiro episode who are now part of the community. Yep. But, what, but what? I, I noticed something, man. What you notice? I feel like a lot of people were not willing to watch the Ben episode. Mm. Because I feel like a lot of people in their minds decided from either a clip from either a video they watch briefly that they don't want to hear him talk mm -hmm. because they feel like they know what he's going to say. Gotcha. And I've also noticed that in 100% honesty, mm -hmm. that when some people come on the show who are of a certain ethnic background, people don't watch them and people don't listen to them and they skip those episodes. Mm -hmm. And... Um, how does it make you feel? Very disappointing. Why is that? Because one of the things that you and I wanted to do since the very beginning, because most people don't know this. Mm -hmm. We've been doing this from the beginning. You know, people have come in during the celebrity episodes. Yeah, yeah. But even before that, like, remember with Ashton came yep. on, Black Lives Matter guy came on, yep. and then the guy came in from the Young Republicans, Republicans and then yep. the Houston Feminists. So yep. we've always been bringing in a diversity of ideas. Yep. And that was the purpose of our show is that, like Oprah said, you can learn from absolutely everybody. Yeah. And we wanted to be able to create a society where, like, people are free to decide what they want to believe, but they're at least willing to gain from different people. And as we've always tried to kind of disassemble celebrity culture, part of that was also the culture of if they don't look like me, if they don't think like me, you know... I won't I'm not watch it. I'm not gonna watch it. I don't know what do you think. No, I think it's definitely a pattern. Um, it's like you can even put it into sports terms. Like, if a guy thinks LeBron's the goat, you aren't gonna listen to people who thinks LeBron is the goat. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to pay attention to anybody that talks down negative negatively about him. So it's the same thing we bring other guests on as well. You can see it. You know, people come only for relationships. Um, people come sometimes when it's just us, um, but. We know what we're wanting to do and what we're uh, striving to do. So it is frustrating because it's like we're putting ourselves out there and we're trying to learn, you know. We're trying to grow our knowledge because I definitely don't know everything about politics. So, you know, if if it's one side, the other side, middle, I don't, whatever, um, they can teach me something. Mm -hmm. I may not agree with everything, but they can at least teach me something. Um, so... It's, I don't know, man. It's, we know this, is, I don't know if we know, but it's going to be an uphill battle for yeah. whatever, you know, if they're controversial. I don't know. Like, I don't even know if, you know, for example, Ben's controversial. I don't know. He is for, oh. for, for certain for people. For certain people. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, so, I love him. You said what? I love him. Oh, yeah. So, um, we know we're going to continue to fight that fight. I mm -hmm. mean, however long we do this, it's going to be consistently like that. We know certain episodes are going to do well. We know certain episodes may not do so, so well. Yeah. So it's like, do we worry about the numbers or do we worry about the message? Man, that's a fantastic point that you just brought up. Do we worry about the numbers or do we worry about the message? Mm -hmm. Because for a lot of people who are new, um, one of the values that people preach today is diversity. Mm -hmm. There's pros and cons to that. I know some people you know, may have different feelings about that. But to me, the most important diversity is diversity of thought. Mm -hmm. Because if you're to create seven identical robots and paint them seven different colors, that's not diversity. Yeah, They think the you. same way. They move the mm -hmm. same way. Everything's the same, but just some external features different. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when people talk about diversity, especially people who lean to the left, they're more so talking about diversity of colors, mm -hmm. but not diversity of, of, of opinions, viewpoints, ideas. cultures, ideas, all yeah, that yeah. stuff. And one of the things here is that we really want to be able to create a place where there's a diversity of, of real ideas, mm -hmm. right? If when we, when we wanted to learn about Black Lives Matter, 
we didn't get some far right person who hates Black Lives Matter to share their views on Black Lives Matter. Yeah. We wanted to get the source. That's why we brought Ashton on the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. Or we wanted to learn about the Republican Party. We didn't go get some, you know, far left um, leftist and ask them, hey, come bash Republicans on our show. No, we yeah. got the communication coordinator for the Houston yeah. Young Republicans. Yeah. So we're always wanting to get the ideas from the source to be able to hear it and learn from them. Same with third wave feminism and all these different ideas we've been exploring on the show. And so, but what happens is so many people who preach diversity and talk about they believe in diversity, they can't stand it. Yeah. You know, like, and that really, that bothers me because everybody wants the other the other to listen to them, but they're not willing to listen to the other. Mm -hmm. You know, like black women will say, we want more white men to listen to our ideas but you're not willing to listen to the white man's ideas you know and then the white people will be like well we want more black people to listen to republican views not be captivated by a democratic party mm-hmm. but are you willing to listen to black people views yourself yeah and and that's just ethnic wise but then culturally there's yeah, all it's a these whole different, different it's a whole different battle you know yeah so your point about views is like if we if we wanted to just simply make money off the show and just get views. We know we can just go all in one or the other. Yeah, easy. You know, it's easy. Yeah, like Chris made a great point because we could easily just do all the relationship stuff that the black women love. Yeah, and we can make a living off of that. Yeah. You know, Stefan's one of our close friends. We know almost everybody in that circle. We can just literally do that all day long, and people would love it. Yep. Yeah. You know, like with Ben and you know a lot of the guys like Crowder and. Peterson and all the guys in that community, we could just easily just be the black people who talk to the Republicans, you know? Mm-hmm. No offense, kind of take the Candace Owens route in a sense. Yeah. And, you know, there'll be a huge audience for us. But yeah. no, we're trying to, like, really wrestle with the complexity of all these different ideas. And it's not profitable and it's not easy. Yeah, and then I don't want to limit ourselves either. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want to just be known as the relationship show, the black Republican show, yeah. whatever that is. So, and also... This podcast is like it's for our fans, it's for our listeners, but it's definitely for us as well. Exactly. So we're using this platform to groom the whole man, you mm-hmm. know, the whole body of armor. If you want to go down that route, it's not just something where it's like, okay, we just groom in relationships and we still like in other areas. It's yeah. like no, like this platform is to create high care to high value people, and that mm-hmm. in multiple different subjects. Political views, you know, men, women, like whatever we decide to talk about and find either go expound on ideas or go get more knowledge, that's what we're going to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I said, if we continue to have that mindset, I mean, I just think as us as men, as a whole man, whole man we're going to be where God wants us to be at the end of the day. So it's not really a matter about just how much money can we make or just limiting ourselves. It's like, if this can bring value to us, we know it can bring value to our listeners. That's awesome. Point and, blank period. And not just that, it's like, if we want, if we all want to move forward in the society, that's everybody's responsibility who is a part of the roommates community mm-hmm. to be willing to accept the values. Like we, mm-hmm. like if you go on the website, roommateshex.com, you can be able to read our core values or go to our Medium page and read our core values. Like, it's going to be really important that we lead the wave and a diversity of thought and lead the way, leave the wave in a thirst for knowledge. So everybody who's a supporter, like I challenge them to not skip episodes because it's not as appealing to you, Mm -hmm. you know, because we bring every, like we've always said this, I'm like sounding like a freaking beating a dead horse, but we've always said that we're constantly trying to bring people we know is going to benefit you in some shape or form. Yep. And, And yeah, guys, I think diversity of thought's a big thing challenging your mind's a big thing and you learn a lot too mm-hmm. and I learn a ton from these different people yeah. and uh, if we want to create a new culture of individuals man we have to be the ones leading this change because mm-hmm. if we don't who will society will just you know lead into like the tribalism and all the unhealthy things that's been going on that creates these unhealthy and toxic cultures there you go I'm right there with you boy yeah Dag Nabbit Dag Nabbit she so here we go there's this book that we're reading. I'm not going to say this guy's name because he promised to come on the show and I don't want to talk about him until he comes on the show. Love it. But I can't wait to have him on the show. He has it's going to be really good. His book before that is about the war on drugs. Okay. 
masterpiece. You are you ready already? I haven't read it already, to be honest with you. So but how I've, you going to say I've read. I've, Ish. I've read. You started. Cliff yeah, notes. and I've Spark notes. and I've heard him do like like not sermons. What's that thing called when you're speaking? Speaking engagements. I guess so. Lectures, <laughs> lectures. Yeah, lectures. I heard him do oh, okay. lectures about okay. the book. Okay. So I'm like, bro, this is about to be a killer. Um, what kind of drugs? Talking about prescription drugs? All drugs? All drugs? Social media drug? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't wait to talk to him about that. Okay. But there is this part in the book that you know you and I were were talking about briefly. And there's a part in the book where he talks about the differences between intrinsic and extrinsic motivations, right? Mm-hmm. So this is really, this is going to be really fun. Love it. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and break down what those two things are. And after I break down what those two things are, I got some questions I want to ask you. Don't ask me nothing. I don't want to know anything. Okay. You're not ready? Yet? Oh, it is in chapter eight. That's where I, you're at. I just said, no, I, I passed that. That's like oh. my favorite chapter. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You, you, don't read, you don't read it. You like every girl in my life. You just read what you want to read and not really respond to it. It's ridiculous. Man. Oh, gosh. Y'all okay. want me to give me anxiety. We'll, we'll talk about that one day. <laughs> so here's what, what our author has to say. I'll, I'll explain what intrinsic motivations are. He said that we have two values that motivate us, intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. Intrinsic motivations, they are things you do purely because you value them and in and of themselves, not because of anything you get out of them. So when a kid plays the piano, they're acting totally on intrinsic motivation. She's doing it because it gives her joy. So that's a big idea. Intrinsic motivation, you do these things only because of what that thing gives to you. Like, I play basketball because it makes me happy. I, I sing basketball. because it makes me happy. I love singing. I, I like to dance because it makes me happy. I cannot dance. <laughs> it's ridiculous. You can dance sitting down. I can, I can really dance with the best of them sitting down. <laughs> and then the next thing is extrinsic motivations. Mm-hmm. And there are things you do not... Whoa. <laughs> Boy, you got this. Leslie. What's going on? <laughs> no, this, this is weird. This is what he wrote. There are things you do not because you actually want to do them, but because you get something in return. So intri- extrinsic values are things you do not because you actually want to do them, but because you get something in return, whether it's money, admiration, sex, or superior status. So, for example, girl A, who's motivated by intrinsic motivation, likes to play the piano, Because it makes her happy. Mm -hmm. Guy B, who's motivated by extrinsic motivation, Mm -hmm. likes to play the piano because the piano gets him attention and that makes him happy. Even though he doesn't like it. Even though he doesn't like it. So one of the things the author talks about is that the more extrinsic motive, the more things you're doing simply because it's giving you an extrinsic motivation, Uh the, the less happier you'll be. And the more things that you're doing in which gives you an intrinsic motivation, the more happier you'll be. Yeah. So I was wondering that if you were to look into your life, how much things do you say right now you're doing because it makes you happy versus you're doing it because to get it? No, sorry, because you're doing it simply because by doing it, you hope to get something that will then make you happy. Yeah. I, I mean, I asked myself that question too. Yeah. Um, I didn't get really into deep into it as in far as like writing stuff down um, and stuff. But I mean, I definitely can know some certain things even today or in my past. I did do a lot of things really to make other people happy, really not even about myself or um, things like that. Um, and I can see how once you do those things and accomplish those things, it doesn't give you the same, you know, Dopamine effect mm, or same dopamine. I know dopamine. The same joy as in like, you know, me getting lost in the world when I play basketball and just enjoying that. Or, you know, sitting here doing a podcast, just enjoying this. Um so it's something that I feel like I need to write down and really like figure out um what's some of my motivations why I do certain things. Um, but it definitely was very interesting reading that, um, having a, that disconnection of 
true value, mm-hmm. you know, and extrinsic extra, extra, extra can also mean like materialism as well. Yeah. Um, and how in the book he says the people that's going after those materialistic things have more likely be a chance of depression and anxiety and, and suicide. So I was just like, wow, as well. Yeah, no, that was a good point. And I think it's, um, like, I... What about you, though? For me? Man, I think um, I was thinking about that the other day. How much How much am I motivated by intrinsic motives versus extrinsic motives? And I'm hyper-extrinsic motives. Hyper-extrinsic. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I realized that is because so much of life is me trying to get something to get something to get else. something else. You That's know, scary, ain't it? Like knowing what he said, like you're you're that's your motivation, and mm-hmm. it's not going to lead you into happiness or whatever. Yeah. That, ain't that scary? It is scary. Um, it is scary. And let's. Let's take my direction a little bit later because that's a little bit deeper. Okay. I want to go to most people and that point about you, the point that you made about materialism. Because when you start asking people, why do you want to make money? Mm-hmm. What do you think people will say? Oh my God, vacations. Mm-hmm. Jesus Lord. Yeah. So a lot of people aren't doing vacations. Yeah. Um, you know, the houses, the cars, clothes. All those things. Yeah. But why? But what about the houses, the cars, the vacations, all those things? What what do you think what do you think people are getting from all those things? Sense of accomplishment, success. Mm-hmm. And I think as well is what society, advertisements and television stuff tells you what makes you happy. Mm-hmm. You know, the the pursuit of happiness, the American dream. Quote, yeah. Quote. Um, definitely. That's what that tells you what you need. You need the latest Apple Watch. Do you think it's a sense of validation? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, easily. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, okay, I want to get down this rabbit hole. I just saw a rabbit hole open up. I said, no, not I yet. But you just thought you saw a rabbit. <laughs> no. no. So people want validation. Mm-hmm. So they buy a car and hope that the car gives them the validation. Mm-hmm. People want validation, so they buy a house, a big house, so the house will give them validation. Mm-hmm. So they, they're, they're really wanting validation, mm-hmm. but they're chasing the cars and all the other materialistic things to get it. Correct. But what else do you think they're chasing besides validation? Affirmation. Affirmation. Do you think acceptance. Like, acceptance, yeah. Yeah, I think it's part of validation as well. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm trying to... I know so many people right now who listen to the show are obsessed with making money. Uh-huh. Like, that's a new thing nowadays. Everybody wants to make money. Making money, making money, let's make Most money. Multiple income. Get the bag. Yeah. Stack, stack yeah, it. Racks on racks on racks. Dun, 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 dun. Money in your palm don't make you real. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I just wonder, like... What are you? What are you really trying to chase? You know, I'm. T- I'm telling you, man. I think literally the people that we look at, the people that we idolize, that's what they do all the time. Mm-hmm. They flash money in, you know, in their car, in their hotel room. Look, you go on Black Youngster Instagram right mm-hmm. now. He's literally in the shower, and the money just, <laughs> just throwing shower. money in there. And just nasty yeah. man. Nasty man. But. um yeah, like when you consistently see people that you follow do stuff that you're not doing and looks like they're not doing too much to get it, mm-hmm. like that definitely plays like I have to get that level of income to live that one percent lifestyle mm-hmm. so I can be happy. I mean, look look at what they have. Because they believe that by living that one percent lifestyle, they'll be happy. Correct. So there was this girl I was um you were talking to her? okay, <laughs> ladies, yeah. ladies. Duh. <laughs> a couple years ago, and what are you saying? I'm sorry. And she was obsessed with being rich as well, obsessed with it. You know, like that one girl I was talking to, that one that really wanted to be a yeah, power. Couple. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
And um, I asked her, I was like, yo, like, why do you want to make money so badly? And her argument was, I want to make money because I want to be able to provide my family a stable life. Okay. So stability is the, is the intrinsic value that they want, a good yeah. virtue. I, want, yeah. I just like stability and my kids being safe and all that stuff. She didn't have kids at the time. But mm-hmm. her care, future kids being safe is something that she longed for. Mm. Safe, protected. And what? And when you dug a little deeper, it turns out that growing up, she wasn't safe. She wasn't protected. And yeah, she yeah, didn't yeah. have a stable background. Gotcha. So she was like, I want to make money to be able to provide that kind of life that I didn't have for my children. So mm-hmm. that's my number one goal. Gotcha. So my, in a sense, she grew up poor. Mm-hmm. And she wanted to be rich. Gotcha. Because she felt like poverty is synonymous with sadness Mm -hmm. and wealth is synonymous with happiness. Right? Mm -hmm. But then I grew up rich, Mm -hmm. but we didn't have a lot of money. Mm -hmm. It's why. Because the wealth was a wealth of love. Mm -hmm. support, care, affection, validation, Mm -hmm. all these positive virtues in society. I grew up with that in my life. Mm -hmm. Never the financial stuff. Yeah. So in my mind, it's, well, in reality, that's what's most important. Mm -hmm. Most people will argue that more than buying your kid a new toy, buying him, not buying him, Spending an hour with him, you know, during dinner is way more important. Yeah. And so I was trying to explain this to her, but she couldn't understand that. Because like you said, social media, TV, everything portrayed to her that if I make this much money, I'm going to create a stable life. But the trade-off, which she didn't understand is in order to make this much money, you got to work this many hours. Yep. You know, people just think I'm going to be a millionaire. Dude, to make a million dollars, you got to put a million dollars worth of work. Yep. If you want to make a million dollars each year, that means each year you're going to have to put a million dollars worth of work in, yep. into your life, which is going to have an opportunity cost to not be able to spend time with your children. Exactly. So I was like, you know, the most important thing that you're trying to give your kids, you're actually by chasing money, you're not going to be able to give it to them because mm-hmm. you won't have any time, mm-hmm. generally speaking. Yeah. And so I just kept, so so what I realized for a lot of people is that they want the extrinsic motivations because they, they think that's what's going to make them happy and provide the best, best life for them. Mm-hmm. So they sacrifice everything good for those things because they've never had it. Yeah. And when everybody's like, I want to give my children everything I never had, they always talk about stuff. Materials. And they never talk about time. Going back to your point where it's like how materialism has affected us. Yeah, no, I think I think time is definitely something that's very underrated mm-hmm. uh, when it comes to even like people our age. Because um, you can just see, if you go to your Instagram now, it's a lot of people that purposely, I wouldn't say purposely, but they basically want to live like a superstar, mm-hmm. you know, and they make sacrifices, go out their way to do certain things to achieve those superstar experiences or whatever. Um, but like you said, if and my like my 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 thoughts with like her is like, okay, if you make the money and you provide all the stuff, the experiences that you didn't have, and you don't give the time, mm-hmm. how like in what way would your children be better? Yeah. Just be having more Material things. Yeah. So this is like, I don't know if it's like you're still fighting the same fight to me. It's like, because you're you poor, but you got time. Well, I don't know if they had, she had time growing up or not. Like, no, because, you know, most people, it's like they don't have either or. Like their parents are working like three, two, three jobs, mm-hmm. single mother, stuff like so that. So they got stuff with no time. And then you have no money with time. I mean, yeah, you have no stuff with time if you're poor. No, you have no stuff and no time because your mom's working two to three jobs, so you get no time. Okay, that's what I'm saying. So, so it's like, to, like, is this like the same? Like, is it the same race? Like, 
I don't know. I'm thinking like is it a, is the way to scale work? So if you have materials with um no time, is it the same with no time and no materials? It's probably a little bit better. With no time and no materials? I mean, ma- materials, materials no with no time is it better than no time and no materials. But materials with no times is not the same as time with, with no, no materials. materials. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That thing, that's the point I'm trying to get to. So and it's like, what's more important? And that's going back to the extrinsic and intrinsic values. Because in reality, what she values, what, what makes her happy the most is having children and her children being happy and healthy. Mm-hmm. And if you really break that down besides, you know, being in abstract poverty, if you're, if you're financially reasonable, I don't want to use the word stable because stable is, everybody has different definition, but financially reasonable, meaning that you're in a healthy median and you can pay your bills and you're not in, you know, stress all the time with money and you pour your time into your children, they're going to be happy. Mm-hmm. So what really brings you happy is not working and making 150K a year. What really could bring you happy, like Gary V talks about, is maybe working 50, making 50K a year, but having a ton of time to spend with your children. So how can you, how can we change the narrative then? Going back to the book is mm-hmm. like f- people breaking down and like even the challenge for some of our, our listeners to write down like what brings you happiness by itself? What What's intrinsically motivating you? And then what are you chasing to get something? What's extrinsically motivating you? And then really break down like why do you want those things? Yeah, so I mean, I guess the power of Human connection is so much greater than materialistic things. But people but people don't know that because my argument is people were poor physically and emotionally. Mm-hmm. Most people were. Mm-hmm. So when you're poor physically and emotionally... You just think, you, you, go get the money. Exactly. Because like you said, that's what you see on TV. You see everybody on TV who's poor physically and emotionally get the money and then we think they're happy. Most of the time they're not. They're depressed and all types of stuff. You know, he talks about yeah, it in the yeah. book. But we don't see people who are physically poor and emotionally poor to get emotional wealth instead of ha- and still obviously taking care of, you know, physical poverty is always an issue. But we don't ever hear their stories. We only hear the celebrity story. We don't hear the guy across the street who's a, a, a school teacher, you know, and a woman, wife who's maybe a secretary and they may not make the f- seven figure, six figure job, but they're happy. They have time together. You know, they spend time with their kids, they go to all their sporting events and extracurricular activities and they're really happy because that's what makes them happy. And so, another thing I thought about right now, why do you think women want to be successful so badly? So they want to be dependent on nobody? A man? Why do they not want to be dependent on a man? Uh, because they always in society been dependent on men. Mm-hmm. So if the man leaves them, they don't. They can take care of themselves. Mm-hmm. So here's an interesting thing. For don't want to get us in trouble. <laughs> I don't know where you're about to go with it. I, I, that's all I'm thinking. I'm, and I'm waiting just like everybody else waiting. So what will make you happy is stability outside of control. Okay. So like she wants to be in, she wants to have her own money, all that stuff, because she wants to know that I control everything and I don't have to depend on anybody. Correct. That's what make you happy. Yeah. I mean, just think about it. Like, if you were just completely dependent on somebody, emotionally, physically, money, I mean, mm-hmm. and that person just ups and leaves, like, mm-hmm. what are you going to do? So I would argue that a lot of their motivation is because they saw somebody or heard a story of a of a woman who was, was in that predicament. Yeah. Like you said, society showed them that there's a woman in that predicament who was dependent upon a guy the guy let her down, yeah, and she was ruined. Maybe her mother, maybe your auntie, maybe yeah, your grandma. Yeah, left with nothing. Yeah. So what's motivating you is the worst possible situation. 
Okay. Not what can be. What do you mean by worst proper situation and what can be? Like, what can be is that you can you can be married, you can have a good husband, you can work and he can work, and you guys can be codependent on, upon one another. Okay. That can be. But I mean, the sounds worst, good. But the worst possible situation is you find a guy, you know, somehow you end up becoming lazy and not doing anything, and then depending on him, and he takes everything from you and leaves you. Yeah, but I, mean, I think they want to define the perfect balance as far as like I'm providing something into this relationship. It's not, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, I think being independent is important, but I do think being valued in a relationship is important as well. Like I'm not solely just, and cause I think, like you said, I know, I know like some relationship man does provides and women stays at home or vice versa whatever Mm -hmm. and they have you know their team and they have their balance Mm -hmm. but in society the way the way women are graduating college and all these things is really super less likely for that to happen yeah so they want a man that's not only least on that level of status or success and greater to provide Fully, well, I don't, I mean, probably not fully, but mainly provide and have their success, have their job and have their accomplishment as well. Like they want to feel like they're definitely adding to the relationship. Okay, so this is where I'm going. So people don't get lost. Going back to the extrinsic and intrinsic motivations. I would argue that what will make you happy is not being by yourself with a ton of money. I mean, yeah, I would, I would think that would, yeah, yeah. You know? Correct. I would argue that the stability is not contingent upon being by yourself. I think the stability- like, take, Can take care of yourself, not be by yourself, yeah, but you, take no, care of no, yourself. No, that's what I mean. I mean, it's not contingent upon me being by myself and not needing anybody. I think the stability is based upon me being with somebody, but not needing them financially. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. So she's like, so the independent woman is not saying, I don't want any men. Mm -hmm. It's just when I have a man, I don't want to be dependent upon the man. Yes. I would argue that. Okay. So I would even push even further to say, if you women were really honest, more than having, oh, this is going to be, this is going to be controversial. (laughs) Man, we hit that. (laughs) If they were asking what would really make them happy, I would argue Besides the exceptional, like intrinsic value, like extrin- extrin- intrinsic, intrinsic values, not extrinsic. Yeah. Like, unless you have a perfect job that just is just so amazing. Yeah. It would be finding a partner who loves them. Yeah. I, but I, th- I think it's for men and women too. I'm not, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, not, yeah, not yeah, picking yeah. on women. I think, um, I think, I mean, everybody's different. You know, so most people, not all. Most, Obviously, not, I, I know in the comments, I know, you know, you're yeah, yeah, yeah. Your role. I got you. We all I got know you. That. Like some, like some intrinsic value. People like being in school. People like studying. People like degrees. Yada yada yada. I would argue people. I would argue that most people don't like being in school. I would argue they like they like school because school gets them a degree and the degree gets some money and the money gets some stuff and the stuff validates them. If you like school, like that means you like to learn. What about school? You, you like learning all the time. Okay. So I need, a, I need to go to your house and see a library there. There are people who like school. They like studying, but most people I don't think they would like school just well, for school's my, sake. Okay, relax. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, um, I'm saying is like, obviously it's always exceptions to the rule. Mm-hmm. Blah, blah, blah. I think it really depends on the, how I view people to like doing something if they don't show nobody that they're doing it mm-hmm. all the time. Like, for example, I really think there's a, a whole... I've been saying this for a while now. A lot of women do not like working out. Yeah. they are, like To me, if you like working out, one, you would have been working out before Instagram popped up. Mm-hmm. And you would not show me every... You're working out every day. Mm-hmm. Like, you wouldn't show me it. Yeah. Like... You know, it's I know people, I know guys, men and women that enjoy working out, that don't do it, that always play basketball. Like you just won't know because they just generally like doing it. Yeah. So 
that's when I think like if 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 a woman loves being independent and by herself, like she just won't really show it because like, I don't because like there's no there's no intrinsic value or accomplishment that she gets to gain for putting that on social media. Yeah, it's what I'm saying. Or letting that be known. Yeah. Like I play basketball four or five times out the week. Yeah. Nobody knows that because yeah. Like I don't post it all the time. Like I don't need it because I get what I need to get from basketball just by playing basketball. Mm-hmm. Like I think it's some. I think it's some independent women that are like that out there. Um, but I don't know how feels like it's. It's just it's tough to say that. Just to ignore those, if they have, if truly have those feelings, it's tough to just ignore it. Yeah, because to me, it's like, are you are you really working a job because you just love that job? Are you really an accountant because you love being an accountant? Are you really working at that oil factory because you like being working at an oil factory, mm-hmm. or do you like working at a job because that job gives you money yeah. and the money lets you buy your purses and your shoes yeah. and then your your apartment and your cars and then maybe to be able to make more money to be able to provide for your children, like. Why exactly do you like doing that, right? Why are you getting your master's degree? Mm-hmm. Do you really just like going to school? Or are you getting your master's degree because you want to get this raise so that you can be able to get this money? And for most people, not all, male and female, I'm just talking about women right now in particular, but I would argue that most women want to have a family one day. Yeah. And most of their efforts is built on providing for a family, which that's what will make them happy. Like yeah. what will really make her happy is having a family that she can provide for. Yeah. And what I'm saying is that if intrinsically, if you're hundred percent honest and what will make you happy is having a family that you can take care of. I would argue that most people are not really doing what makes them happy. Mm-hmm. Like chasing your career and spending all your time in your 20s and early 30s chasing your career as a young woman is not just going to be offensive, but it's just this is my personal opinion. Mm-hmm. And I think this is true for some people or most people, I'm sorry, is not the best way of going about making you happy. Mm-hmm. There's a, and there's, in all honesty. So like, all right, if, people, if, if, if a woman is listening to that. Yes. What, what do you what does she do? Like, OK, you're right, Hafiz. I am like that. <laughs> like if she says that I am like that What is her next step I'm just drop out of school Just quit my job No 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 Like I Like for me it's Chase what makes you happy So in the book What you oh, I almost said his name I almost said his name In the book What the author says Is that It's Having extrinsic motivations Aren't bad All the time mm-hmm. Is that the balance Of the two Is important And the balance Should always be The scale should always be Leaning towards intrinsic so do stuff, do more things that make you happy than do things simply because by doing them, I'll get something that'll make if me I'm happy. At, okay, if a woman said work all the time. You need to reorient your, you reorient your life. So you need to leave that job. Maybe not leave your job, maybe. How you, but you work all the time. So if I'm an accountant and it's busy season, that's, I'm working that's all the time. busy season. Okay, my lawyer, am I working all the time? Like, I can... <laughs> But yeah, but to me, it's like like Ben Shapiro. Mm-hmm. That was his story. If you guys watched it on Lewis House's podcast, mm-hmm. he was a lawyer. He was spending all the all those hours of day doing whatever he was doing at that law firm he was at. He wasn't happy. Yeah, he was not enjoying himself. So he left the law firm. He had law school with all his all his loans and all that stuff. He left the law firm. I don't know. It's not easy. I'm just saying that it's well, not easy. Is basically what yeah, we getting down I, to. I guess my point, the grand point that I'm trying to make is that for all the women who don't. Who say we don't want men? You want family. <laughs> I thought that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So you don't want men, but then you want family. But then to get family, you need men. So it's like this idea of like jettisoning men out of your life for 15 years and then working on your career and then picking up a man later, to me, is counterproductive for what will make you happy. Mm-hmm. And changing that conversation to be like, you know what? I actually, like, to me, it blows my mind. And I, and I, and I, just, I don't know how feels. I mean, ahead. that's just tough. That's tough to hear, and that's tough to digest, and it's tough to just change because, like you said, when people growing up, and literally, you got television, social media are all telling you what to do. Like, like literally, 
it's it's programming us to worry about extrinsic things all the time. Yes. And pre- like these extrinsic things are going to prepare you and get you where you want like intrinsically. Like yes. you need this money will make you happy because you can provide for your family. Yeah. So in a sense, some women are going on that goal. It's like I'm in school to be a doctor because I know for a fact that with the money, mm-hmm. I can definitely provide my family in a greater, yes. you know, financially. But this is the. I'm just saying that's that's is, the goal. This, that's not. I, a, I to know, them, it I might know. not be counterproductive, is what I'm but saying. But here's a spicy. And here's a spicy. Spicy. The spicy take about that. <laughs> okay. The spicy take about that is that, like I say, there's nothing wrong with because we all have to be able to put food on the table for your children, right? But the most important thing, in my opinion, of providing for your family, what will really make you happy is more than you having a good job is you actually having a good husband. If we're just being really honest. And vice versa. And yeah, you know, men, men too, of yeah, course, yeah, yeah, with yeah. men. That's, that's key. So if... So you're <laughs> saying the husband is more important than the job. Yes. So. I'm talking about like going back to the values of like I said I was I was born rich by having like what will really make you happy is your your children safe supported loved cared for right and that kind of environment that's what will really make you happy and you thinking that working a job let's say you're a doctor mm-hmm. working a job making four fifty a year which is some great money if you're at, in, amazing in, money. but if you're making four fifty a year you're working. Four fifty a year in hours. No, you're right. And you by yourself working four fifty a year hours, like yeah, your kids are gonna have all the nice Jordans and the nice house and the and the stuff. But like, where's mommy? The depth, you know, yeah, yeah. of life. And so what I'm arguing is not to not go to college, not to not do these things, but to really dive deep into your life and to say, what do I really want? And if you really dive deep. Part of you having a healthy family is like your kids having like a healthy father, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so when women just act as if they don't want men and they, and they don't, don't need, need men, men, like and like and they and they like I said, they jettison it, they disregard it through all throughout their twenties and early thirties, it's counterproductive for what will make you happy. Yeah, they just gambling. I mean, they just they literally just focus on I mean, like I said, in your mind it may be counterproductive. Most of them is probably not. Like, I got where I wanted to be. This is what I worked hard for. Like, but like you said, if, if their values is to start a family, who said they want to start a family at 40? Is it counterproductive then? If they're going to start a family at 40? Yeah. I mean, if they, are you freeze, if you, if you are, know you're going to be a doctor. Let's be honest. Are you freezing your eggs? I mean, I don't know how I feel. I'm, I'm just saying. saying. I'm, I'm, talking just, I'm, I'm talking practicality. Yeah, I'm just, I'm letting you know. Yeah, I'm right. I get, I get what you're saying. I'm saying that like, you can't tell me these women are not thinking about that. But let me tell you why. Most guys, I would argue this. This is this is not the spicy take. Okay, good. I'm glad it's not. I was I'm, I'm, I'm getting hot. <laughs> I said, most guys, I would argue, this is a spicy take now. I think All about right, it. spice it up. Then. Most guys, I will argue, still look for women as they're building stuff up. Yeah, it's not a known... Thing where it's an independent man. I'll ne- you never hear about guys. <laughs> I don't need no girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like even even by guys who say that, they still have women around them. Oh, for sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're not like, fooling me. Like, there's no, there's not. I the, know you have a roster. The, Just because it's not a number one player, yeah. and a star player, I know you have a roster. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like what men do is that men still have women around. While they're chasing their dreams, they may not prioritize them with the official label of girlfriend, it's fiance. Hard. It's hard to compare men and women though, because like like you said, we just like the look and the company. When when there's a freaking whole scroll of list that women have that men needs to have for them to get their attention, but you can't. It's hard to compare. But my point is this: my point is that men have an ability to do both, both. and that helps them a lot in life as a, as they realize what they what really makes them happy they at least have an availability to get the romantic part but when in my opinion when a lot of young girls 
just chase after the careers and the jobs and all that stuff. When they do want to get the romantic part now, they've never developed. They've, they have a whole decade of like it being not available. And so I'm not arguing. I'm, my argument isn't, hey, don't go ahead and chase your careers and all that stuff is to do both. Like this, and there's nothing wrong with doing both because if you really break down what will make you happy, having a good husband and children who, who love their dad and have a healthy family will really make you happy. So do, do chase both. Stop just ignoring one for the other. I do, I do feel like women chase both in college and in high school. I was saying high school. I don't think in college. I think so. I mean, I, it is hard for me for women to just it completely ignore continuous shots. It just depends on the guy. And you're not ignoring Odell Beckham Jr. Like, let's be honest. You're just not. In college, you might, depending on... You might be. <laughs> I'm for real. Because think about... She can. Let me tell you, <laughs> you no Because she can be in college and she can... And we're going down another rabbit hole, but... She can be in college and she can be the alphas and the kappas and the Q dogs. Not every, Odell every, Beckham but, Jr. But, but in college... They they top of the line. That's what I'm saying. They're all the same. I I I don't know. Yeah. I think is I think what I'm saying is it's a great chance of them ignoring men and being independent. Yeah. And saying I don't need y'all after college after they already got in their careers. To me. So if I know I'm a senior level accountant, it's just like. But my point is, you got there somehow. Some you made a switch in your mind somehow, some way. I think the switch is after college. I think I think a lot of switch happened like senior year of college. I mean, I mean, barely. I mean, I guess. Yeah. Right. I mean, if I know I'm about to go work at Google, I mean, I'm, I may switch up. On yeah. that. <laughs> you know, like, hey. I I don't know. Like, yeah, it's definitely a decision after yeah. college would makes them like either they're going to wait for Mister Perfect or they may settle whatever whatever word they want to use. Yeah. Um, but it's not about waiting. It's about pursuing what will make you happy. And, and, and he talks about it in the book, and that's my focus of it. My focus is, and we'll, you know, there's going to be different people going to talk more about this. My point is, if you're with this, if you can, are able to pursue and attain a four-year degree, a master's degree, a car, your own house, your dream job, if you're able to pursue these things, all these women are ambitious, they're competent, they're intelligent, they're able to pursue and achieve all these things. My thing is that the guy, as much as you act like you don't want him, will also make you happy. So with that same energy you used to get that master's degree, with that same energy you used to get your car and your job and all those things, use that same energy to get the guy. It sounds good, but it's like... They don't do it. They don't. They, I don't, I, don't, they think, don't. I, I don't think they do it, but I also don't think, I think they have a high expectations of, of I think they have a certain guy that they want. And it's like when they get to that certain but guy. They had, but they had a certain car that they want. They had a certain apartment that they want. They had a certain job that they want. They got all three of those. But we know, but we know there's way more high level women than men in the scale of things. We know that. You know what I found out recently? What is the reason? What you found out? Do you know, well, if you're talking about black women, I can understand that. Do you know under the age of 35, there's more men than women in this world? I mean, the United States. More men than women? Yes, under the age of 35. Okay. So what happens is after the age of 35, you know, diseases and all yeah, types yeah, of other yeah. stuff get men. Yeah, men, and then, and men then, get killed. Especially at right. the top, it's like... Yeah, it's nothing but women. Yeah. I got you. So in reality, under the age of 35, it's actually more men than there is women. Okay. So like, there's, it's possible... Like, it's still possible for you to meet somebody. Uh, yeah. I mean, but if, if they you, want the senior level, if they want the senior lawyer, like... There's senior lawyers out there, but they don't... What I'm saying is, what put you, in the energy to get them. I don't know how it's... That's tough, bro. Well, here's I, my question I just, I just think, I just think if you. they have a certain amount of money that they're making, they're going to want a guy naturally to make more than them. My question to you is, are they putting in the work to get them? Why do women put in work to get them? When have ever, women ever put in work to get us? And that's my point. <laughs> That's my whole point. It's okay. not about him not being available. My thing is that with the same, going back to intrinsic motivations, what will motive, what will make you happy? The, in the beginning, the example I used, this girl loves to play the piano. It makes her happy, so she plays the piano. What things that will make you happy, you pursue those, you attain those, you gain those. If the guy 
will make of a healthy husband will make you happy. You should be spending your time eagerly pursuing that. Your point of girls not doing it is what I'm saying is a problem. Gotcha. All right, you should miss that. <laughs> should miss that. And then on the flip note, with guys, now we can go to me. I would argue that most guys pursue the extrinsic just for the women. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I agree. Yeah. I think it, I, I definitely agree. I for sure. And real for quick, sure. correct me if I'm wrong, Chris. For women. Pursuing the extrinsic will never get you guys. <laughs> am I right or am I right? All right are we going to be honest? <laughs> if I see an eight uh-huh. that has an associate's degree mm-hmm. and there's a woman who's a six mm-hmm. who has a master's degree, mm-hmm. what do you think I'm going to choose? The eight. It's sad. I yeah. know. It's sad. Yeah. Trust me. I get it. I, don't kill me. Don't kill me. I already know. I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I told y'all. I'm Ephesians 1 through 3. Go yeah. read it. I already know. But it's not It's not sinful, though. I would argue that's not sinful because that's what makes you happy. That's true. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, we have to, like, what? what? My butt's starting to hurt on this goddamn thing. <laughs> Neither. I don't know what I need. Yeah. But, you start making me hide and ask me to choose sixes and eights. And <laughs> but no, so what I'm saying is that if... If the beautiful woman genuinely makes you happy, uh-huh. you chase that. Yes. If you're a woman and the successful guy genuinely makes you happy, you chase that. I'm not de- demonizing no yeah, person. Yeah. So going back to the guy point, guys, we chase the extrinsic stuff. We chase the cars, yep. the clothes, the houses, the careers, because that gets us the women. Yeah. Generalizing, yeah. You know, generally speaking, yeah, yeah, obviously, yeah. some people do like to work for the sake of working. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. a lot of it has to do with what it gets you. Yeah. I mean, because like that's that's what seems to attract the women that that guy wants. So back to me when you asked me earlier, Hafiz, why? What motivates you? I would argue that eighty percent of my motivation, in all honesty, is from women. Like eighty percent of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Got you. Yeah. Yeah. You want the thing, those clubs. You want the power. You want the power. And so I realized that a lot of things I do is because, and, and you guys are going to infiltrate next week, but a lot of things that I do is because I'm like, okay, if I get this, you get that. Then I get that. Then I get that girl. If I can get this, then I'll get that girl. But my thing is, yeah. with the book, mm-hmm. if you get that girl, yeah. if, what he's saying is still not going to make you happy. So my argument is that my intrinsic motivation. <laughs> listen to no, your listen, boy listen, right listen, now. Listen, listen. I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm saying that. So here's a point he made. Uh, okay, no, no, don't it's dance. Not, it's not that wanting the girl is bad. It's spending all your time working a job you hate to get a girl will make you unhappy because you're doing a job that makes you unhappy. Okay. So. I get it. Obviously, that's why I said like all extrinsic is not bad because they're, 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 you have to put in work sometimes to get what you want. So my thing is, in yeah. your experience in your life, all the stuff that you do to get said girls, mm-hmm. you've been happy this entire time? If I got the girl? Without the stuff? No, I'm saying you say you, all your extrinsic motivation is 80% why you do stuff. Yeah. I'm saying, what you're saying is, it's like I now enjoy doing what I'm doing. So it's not really a negative effect on me. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that if you, the point I made is that if you chase a career that you hate, let's say you want to be a lawyer just to get women, that's going to make you miserable because you're working a job. Correct. I get you. You know? So what I'm saying is. Two pillows. (laughs) What I'm saying is for me, I realize that most of my motivation is the, is the women because I've equated, I think a lot of young men have equated that they won't value you unless you have that stuff. Why do you want women so much? I don't want to say it's women. I just think it's just like a, a, a woman. I don't think it's women. I just say, like like I said, there's nothing wrong with like mm-hmm. or, a, a wife or wanting a husband. Like I think it's... You I don't think equ- that's dangerous though? What, wanting a wife? No, not wanting a wife, but like your soul motivation. Not when say solely, but 80% of your motivation. I think it's what makes me happy. Like I don't, but I don't, you don't think like once you find that one woman, yeah, you don't think you idolize that one woman. 
No, because it makes me happy. Like to me, no, I, and not make me like, happy. Idolize it. Idolize. No, I think because a lot of women like that too. Well, to me, it depends on if it. I can see where you're coming from, but if it makes you happy, like you, you going and playing basketball makes mm-hmm. you happy. Yes, it can be an idol. But in mm-hmm. and of itself, it's 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 neutral. Yeah, but I'm not doing eighty percent of my life towards playing basketball. If you had nothing but free time, I guarantee you'd be playing basketball a lot yeah, of your time. N- but no, I won't. Because it's not it makes me happy temporarily, but it's not my sole focus. But that's my point. If it really brought you that much happiness, if something brings you that much happiness, you want to spend all day doing it. There's some people right now who love playing Madden. And if they yeah. could play Madden eight hours a day, they'd be so happy because that's what bring, brings them happiness. I find nothing wrong with if that's what makes you happy to do that. So if there's a girl, a beautiful woman who's spending eight hours a day with her will make you happy, what's wrong with that? I said idolize. I said, you don't think that will make you idolize. I'm, I'm saying, saying that you can idolize anything that makes you happy. But it's, idol- it's, so it's idolizing good or bad? It's bad. So what are we talking about? You're telling me, will I idolize? Yes. And I'm saying... It could happen because okay. anything you you makes you happy can idolize. You can idolize your children. Does that mean spending eight hours a day with your kids is bad? No, I mean idolize. No, I mean if you put up, it's not a time. I, yeah. I mean I, you can idolize something two seconds. Like yeah, um, I don't know. I'm just asking. Yeah. You know, I'm just asking. And I guess what I'm saying is, I said eighty percent of the things I do is to get said woman because that's the thing that I don't have that will make me happy. I've gotten everything else. I don't know, man. I that has to make you feel some type of way, though. So what do you do? What, no, I'm asking. No, wait, we're staying on you. Don't, don't ask me no question. That don't make you feel some type of way. No, that you, literally you have to do all this work just for that one woman to get you attention. No, huh? That's scary. It's a game. It's life. It's, mm, it's life. I, I don't know. You don't think that's some level of arrogance to her? To me? To her? Like? On her Like you cannot get my attention Unless you have X amount of criteria Do we not do the same thing To women Chris We do I'm asking yes, I'm so asking To yeah. me To me I'm a rule for a rule I'm an equal opportunist Shout out equal opportunist out there So my thing is that As a guy If you want a, If you want A certain woman Like Stefan always talks about You gotta raise your qualifications You gotta raise your qualifications You cannot You cannot ask for this girl Who got the But my thing Yeah, yeah well I guess Cause I guess the qualifications Get you in the job Yeah Like it gets you In the job interview Yeah I don't know Me I, ideally I want a baddie Just see me And just want me Without knowing Knowing nothing else Right So it's like I have to put in I have to go to college <laughs> Get my masters Get my doctorate Just to get a seat You know At Chevron Yes You know And then hopefully Chevron will like me Yes Basically Yes And bring- But I don't know It's like But If Chevron Just sees me Right out of high school <laughs> I feel like Chevron would like me if I get a job interview. It's like, hey, I got to do all this work to just get a job interview when I could have just been got this 10 years ago. And that's what I think we're trying to do with the roommates community. Yeah. So one of our values is kindness, right? And as respecting, caring for, valuing all people regardless of their status. Don't just worship the celebrities. Respect and value all people. Give all people an opportunity. So what we're doing right now is we're creating a world where people don't need those extrinsic values. So in the roommates community, now, you do, whether you have $50,000 a year or $500,000 a year, we respect you the same, right? If you're a girl and you're average looking and you're beautiful, we, I mean, we'll respect you the same. I mean, depending on the guy, dates, I can't guarantee you getting dates, yeah. you know? But I'm saying like, so what I'm saying is that we're creating that right now. And that's the and that's the beauty of what we're trying to fight for, creating a world where people can truly chase after what makes them happy and truly be themselves and re- receive respect and validation for it. Obviously, when it comes to sexual selection, this everyone's gonna have a criteria. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, yeah. I'm not ever gonna attack someone's laundry list of things they want in a man or a woman. Yeah. But in regards to so much of what motivates people on a day to day basis outside of romantically. I really believe that by creating this community where everybody is valued, everyone has respect, everybody has love, everybody has care, everybody has support, whether you're the richest or poorest, whether you're an NBA player or the freaking water boy, I think it frees people up to just do what makes them happy. Mm. Oh, that's tough, man. I mean, not tough. No, I'm saying it's it's tough to sit here and think about like 
It's like you're literally playing the game. To unlock the certain kind of girls or guys that you want, you have to literally get to the next level every single time. It's like, oh, you unlock this group. Oh, you unlock this group. Because to me, and and without being too redundant on that point. Yeah, I didn't mean to go back. Yeah, that's cool. Without being too, it's like, you can't, you have to be honest. I'm so honest about myself. The things I like in women are so superficial, Mm -hmm. but I, I like it. Yeah. But, and the things that I like, society gives us too much. It's overvalued. So it's, it's if I'm going to like this part of a woman that gives her super value, I can't, I can't get mad at her wanting something in me that gives me super value as well. You know? Yeah. Like, it's superficial. Like, her, like me liking that part of her body is superficial. So f- for me to be up somewhat upset, and let's clarify, I'm not saying that that's the only thing I like about her, but it's the it's the resume, right? It's mm-hmm. the thing that gets her to interview. She still needs to have the character and the yeah, yeah, godliness yeah. and all that stuff. So for me, if uh if the if the woman wants the guy just because he, the woman's criteria of a guy dating her is a certain amount of money or ambition or job, what's wrong with that? Mm-hmm. Because she still is looking for, okay, once you have the money, the job, or the status, now I want you to have the godliness. So to me, you can ask for whatever you want as long as you're willing to receive the demands of the other person as well. Okay. You still feel, I mean, like... No, I, I, yeah. I, mean, it's, it's, I get it. Because to me, I'm like, like, what do you want? <laughs> huh? Like, what do you want? You huh? got to say it. But in your mind, think no, about I, the girl that I, you want. I get it. Yeah. I yeah, know, I get it. <laughs> so I get it. so nah. yeah so I just think that the goal of the roommates is that I want people to pursue what makes them happy and I want people to feel loved and cared in the midst of their pursuits yeah I mean I, I want people to definitely go out and have intrinsic motivation mm-hmm and set up their life with their intrinsic motivations. And if the extrinsic motivation or goal gets you to where where you need to be intrinsically, then that's what you should do. Exactly. Basically. Um, so you know, that's something where I feel like we definitely, you know, I figured out about life, like my old job, I didn't realize I was going to do a lot of work and be home away a lot. Mm-hmm. And... You know, I was like, I can't do this forever because I know I want to be at home when yeah. I want to be at home. Yeah. You know, not when I could be. Like yeah. that's time is very important, and being at home when you could be, I could. Like, I'm coming home after six. Yada yada. Yeah. Like, nah. Like I want to make sure I'm at the basketball game, acting a fool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, so um, definitely, I think that's one of our goals. Is that's a community. Figure out what your intrinsic values are and motivations and goals, and then use that as the eighty percent Hafiz. Yeah. And use the other twenty percent, the extrinsic, yeah. and make sure that can lead to those intrinsic goals. No, that's that's beautiful, and that's what I agree with. And the it's a good whole, chapter in the book, man. It's a great, great chapter. Great book. chapter. I can't wait to see it comes on the podcast, and that's yeah, yeah. and that's just basically the general message of of this of this episode. Yeah, yeah. You know, the 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 general message is that man, like. So much of us are chasing after junk values and money and cars and statuses and things. And we're spending all of our time trying to get things yeah. that we know will never, ever, 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 ever bring us true happiness and joy. So my challenge, everybody, is like after this episode, just write down a list, extrinsic, intrinsic list, and really break down like, okay, what am I currently doing right now? to get something that will make me happy and put that on the extrinsic list. Mm -hmm. And what are things that genuinely bring me happy just by doing that thing itself? Put that on the intrinsic list and to spend most of your life chasing those things that truly, 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 truly make you happy. And if you do that, you definitely have a greater chance of having less likely to be depressed, Mm -hmm. have anxiety, Mm -hmm. and suicide. Yeah, and then the beauty about the roommate's community is that once you're freely chasing what makes you happy, we're going to love and respect you regardless. So if you're a person, you want to be an abstract painter making $25,000 a year in freaking um, Cambodia, yeah. like, yo, we, we, we love you. You're yeah. just as 
awesome to us as the Hollywood executive making $7 million a year, you know? And so if you're a woman who what really makes you happy is working in the Peace Corp maybe in, you know, Lagos, Nigeria, all for that. Like, spend your life doing that and we're going to love you and value you. You know, you're not going to be lesser than a woman than the woman who's like, well, make me happy is having five kids, a house, and a dog. Like, you both are... One is in varsity, one is in junior varsity. We respect both these women. Exactly. But my goal is that everybody can be honest. Our goal is he, you and this my. I'm going to throw something I'm sorry. I'm Our throwing goal. Throwing to, throwing. You haven't been here. <laughs> oh, it's my fault. <laughs> that, <laughs> we'll talk about the April 1st. <laughs> but um, our goal is that you will find a place here and we will love and support you as you pursue what will truly bring you joy. And I think that's it, man. Yeah, I was good. I yeah. Was good. Jeez so, Louise. So, guys, remember, make sure you subscribe to our second YouTube channel. The link is in the description below. If you haven't done so, guys, please be respectful and care a little bit about it. Oh, Hafiz and Chris. And make sure you click on that disc- the, the link. Subscribe to the second channel. As Once again, it's bit.ly <laughs> slash... <laughs> <laughs> B <laughs> B I T dot L Y slash T R P clips. And then remember guys, April first, we have some very, very big news for you. Yes, Make sure you come for that episode. It's going to be some very, very big news. And the next two weeks, I'm saying this right now. Oh my God. <laughs> might be I'm the so biggest nervous. episodes of the podcast ever. <laughs> I'm so nervous. Next two weeks is about to be ridiculous. I'm so nervous. Before we make our big announcement, April first. I'm so, so nervous. Guys. Aren't you it's nervous? Crazy. It is what it is, bro. <laughs> it yeah. is. So, hey, ladies, shoot your shot. Oh Stop, don't be afraid. I, listen, listen. I know how I know how Hafiz can see. Uh, right? He's so smart and doesn't want y'all. Trust me. He calls me about this every day. Oh my goodness gracious! He wants to be loved, Hafiz. You want to be loved. Don't act like you don't want this. Don't let don't let him discourage y'all. You pull it. You pull the As shot. As I said at the beginning of the podcast, mm-hmm. your boy Hafiz. Chris, the star of the show, baby. And we are the roommates, guys. Make sure you subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to this current channel and also the second channel. Hey, guys, if you haven't subscribed on iTunes, make sure you subscribe and give us a review on iTunes. That'll mean the world for us. April 1st, put on the calendar. We have some very, very big news. We love you. Next week's episode is about to be crazy. I'm so nervous about that. We're out of here.